Hey there, Russ here. Welcome back to the shop. <clears throat> okay, today I'm going to show you how to take a pair of these, just ordinary hand screw clamps, and we're going to turn this into one of the best little workbench vices you've ever seen. Actually, it's a multitasker because I can still use these as clamps or turn them into a workbench of any size. I can hold things in many different directions. It's very versatile. It's like the Swiss Army knife of vices. So let me show you. First thing we're going to do is turn it from a hand clamp into a vise in less than a minute. You ready? Got your stopwatch? Go. So I take this. I need a knob and I need one of my T-bolts. I put it here. And now it's done, ready. And now I have a clamp that I can put anything in and tighten it down on there. Now, <clears throat> if you want to hold still, I have a couple of different ways I can do this in my work environment. Right now, if I want to, I can just take a couple of clamps and put a couple of clamps on here and hold this in place. I also have it set up where I can also take, and I have a hole here, I can take a secondary one of these and drop it down through that hole and go through my bench dog holes. I have a bench dog hole every four inches all the way around the perimeter of my workbench except for from here to here. This area I left kind of open. So I can put this vise just virtually almost anywhere on here and I'll show you that as we go along. <clears throat> but that's not all. First thing they're asking, and I can hear him in the background. What about the other one? Well, quite simply, I have one here, and now we're going to have a second one. And this one, I'll, let's mount it here real quick, just so you can see how that works. So I'll take my T-bolt, drop it into the recessed area. I'm going to take this little three-quarter inch piece of dowel that I have a hole drilled in it. And I'm just going to pop it in there like that. That will give me to hold this to where I want it in that hole. And now I can tighten it down with a knob. So I put a knob on the bottom and I spin it up. And now I can tighten it to hold it in place or loosen it up and turn it any direction. So now I can take this one, take my second vise jaw, my second hand screw vise. And let's put it in here. And now I have a vise that I can have that is any width vise that I want. So in other words, instead of holding, instead of holding a piece with one jaw, if I have something that's longer, I can put it in here and snug it down. Take my second vise, let me open it up, and put it over here and tighten it down. And now I have a vise that is eight inches wide. If I want, uh oh, we're being attacked. What do you want? Huh? What do you want? Yeah? I have a secret weapon this time to get rid of her. Little piece of rawhide with a little bit of, with a little bit of peanut butter in it. Ooh, here, here. And there you go. She'll be busy for a while. We should be able to finish this now. Sorry about the interruption. But now I have this white vise. I could just as easily take it. And instead of that, I could have a a 16 inch or 18 inch wide vise. Clamp it down, and I now either with a hold fast or with clamps, and I now have a really sturdy vise.
then I have a nice sturdy vise that will hold it in place here and it's 18 inches wide so it's really handy I can use it for almost any width I want by using both of them um, also as far as mounting it check this out not only can I mount it on my workbench but if you remember in my shop I have this little metal work surface that is used for my electronics and wood carving and different things like that and I can take this one and I put magnets in the bottom so now I have this thing over here and I can just very easily take and quickly turn this into a little helping hand so uh, that's the different ways that I can mount this thing and if it doesn't seem to hold very well with the magnets on there just put more magnets on it until you got it where it will really hold so it however how much holding power you want this is more than adequate to me but you may want more magnets than that on your version so but you get to do that however you make it now in the next video we're going to talk about how to make this and then in the third video I'm going to show you all the little tips and tricks because one of the things about these that I will tell you now is the hardest part to this is figuring out which way to turn which clamp to get this thing to go straight and to be at the right position. Trying to do all that with two handles or even worse with four handles to adjust it. I'm going to show you how you can do that real easy. If you can take and rub your stomach and pat your head at the same time, you can do it. Or rub your head and pat your stomach. If you can do that, you can work one of these things. And I'll show you how easy it is and how to look at it. And by looking at it, I know which way I want to turn which knob to get that jaw to do exactly what I want it to do instantly. You just need to be enlightened about that. So we're going to go over that too. So if what you've seen here is a good start, you're going to want to stay with us. But real quick, before we end this video, let me show you a couple of quick other variations of this vise that you can also do. I can also take this vise and turn it into a single vise like this. And I can put this thing in from this direction. Like so. And now I can put my vise in, my clamp on it this way. And I have a vise that overhangs my bench. So I can hang it all the way down if I want something longer that I can put in here and clamp it down. I also can take it and I can turn it this way. Now this way might look vaguely familiar to you if you're familiar with my videos. A couple of videos ago, I showed you how to take these and turn them into a simple moxin vise on your workbench. If I take and put this in here, whoops. And I mount this. Everything's still loose. Whoops. Everything's still loose. So now I can take this and mount this right like this. And I'm going to snug this knob down. Now I'm going to snug that knob down. And I now have a makings of a moxin vise. And if I want it to be a true moxin vise, I can take this one and mount this one this way with this thing. Mount it to go this way, opposite of this. These two are mirror images so that you can do that. And I can mount this one here. And I then have a nice moxin vise setup that I can take and take a piece in and out. And use it just like a moxin vise if that's what I want to do. So as you see there, there's lots of different ways you can hold this thing if you want. Also, another feature that you have with this since you have two clamps, the other thing you can do with it is actually put them both on the same. We can put these both on the same clamp and do some more with it than that. So if I take this one and we put it here, like so, then I take this one and we want it to go this way. What I'm paying attention to is my handles. 
I want the one handles to be staggered. You may want to put them on this way. Especially if you're new to doing this, using this, because to use these handles, you now are going to have to use two knobs instead of one as a general rule. So I'll put it on this way for now. I tend to like it to put it on the other way, but then I'm used to how to adjust these, and I don't have a problem adjusting it the two different jaws. By having them on the same way, I'm actually turning whether I'm working on this vise or this side of the jaw. I'm working the same direction with my clamps so that if I want to move both my jaws out, I'm moving them the same direction. So it helps you with a little muscle memory to be able to adjust one side and then the other the same way. It just makes it easier. Later on, you'll probably want to switch it like I always do. In fact, so I'm going to take mine. Uh -huh. I'm going to take mine and I'm just going to switch it right here and now. Because I prefer this way. It just gives me a little more finger clearance around my knob to get my hand on it is why I like it, but they do turn opposite when you're looking at it, moving them. And you learn to do that pretty easily. Now, because I have two jaws, one of the things I want to do is I want them to be in perfect alignment on the stationary half of the jaw. So I'm going to take, the first thing I'm going to do is let's adjust these to where I can put that piece in there. Like so. And now we're going to take and put this piece in here. It's loose. I got it in only one jaw. And I just barely tightened it, just enough to hold it in place. Then I take this one and tighten it up on there too. Now they're both in perfect alignment with this board, the surface of this board. Now all I have to do to tighten it down is push these straight down so that they're nice and level. Straight down. Don't worry about these. And when they're nice and straight and level... I now do this, and I tighten it down. Now when I loosen them, when I put this in here, they're perfectly in alignment across the plane. So now when I tighten down, it's going to hold my piece in both of these pieces equally and flat so that I now can hold this in place like I want. So this now is ready to be used as a double jaw. And now you say, well, why would I want to make it more complicated? Well, there are times when that double jaw is going to be better for you. Let me show you. Here's a good example. If I take this right here and I put it in my regular vise, a regular white jaw, whether it's one of these or face vise or whatever, this has got so many different levels of diameters of trying to hold it, trying to hold this thing in here and not have it move or jump out, pull out easy, is next to impossible. But check this out. If I put it in this one, whoop. now I can take, oh, let's do this. I think I need to adjust that. Let me adjust it while I'm looking at it. Okay. Now I can put this in here. And tighten it down two finger tight only with both of these and by two two finger tight it's not over tightening and crushing it or anything but as you can see let me tighten that knob down and as you can see this thing is now held pretty sturdy in place you'd never get it that good held that tight in there and not only that you don't need near as much force with a double jaw as you do with a single jaw vice like that and by that, I mean, let's take a simple piece of cardboard. Let me adjust this. And let's adjust this so that I'll be, be able to fit that cardboard in there. See, that's the hard part, is adjusting these. But I know how to do this. And this is one of the things I'm going to show you in the next video is how to take this and adjust it now so that I can take this and I'm just going to put this and let's take and let's squeeze it down on a piece of cardboard. I'm just going to use this area right here because this is not crushed. This is all still perfectly flat 
And if I put this in here, just to tighten it down, like so, two finger tight. So let's go, let me tighten this down. Let's go a little tighter, a little tighter. There, we're, now we're finally there where it's not gonna move. Hey, no barking. And when I pull it out though, it actually has crushed the fibers here and it's indented this, in this jaw. I can take this same piece, take another area right here that is not crushed and put it in this one, two finger tight, two finger tight. And you're not gonna move that. But the beauty of it is, there's no marking and no crushing on the cardboard to hold this. So I hold it better in here than I can in that. And if you look at my jaw, what I have in <laughs> Hey, you guys knock it off. Sometimes daddy has to interfere. Don't be so grouchy. She probably took the peanut butter away from the little one. Usually she takes that and runs off in the corner somewhere and does it. So she made a mistake. She didn't take it somewhere else. So anyway, these have the same jaw lining on it. I used that rug grip tape that I talked about in a previous episode. Um, I took and put that on these jaws. I also have that. No, no more. Go on. Here. I can also put that on these jaws is what I did so that this has the same gripping as this does. The only difference between putting it in here and here was the amount of torque I had to use in order to hold this cardboard down. So that's everything in a nutshell. I now introduced it to you. This is only the beginning of what you can do with this in all different configurations. There's a lot of advantages to this and it's made out of a couple simple, easy, clamps. I use nothing more than two ordinary clamps and I can take them off and still use them as clamps so they're multitasking now. Hey, down, down, go on, down. Sorry. Anyway, I guess I'm going to have to go. She's just not going to leave me alone now. She wants her peanut butter piece back. But that's it. If you have any questions here, any comments, any thoughts, let me know. I will tell you that vice there, I made it a few years ago in an 8 inch version. You can take this same idea and do it with any pair of hand screw clamps that you have. This one was an 8 inch clamp and this thing has just been wonderful for the last three years that I've used it. I can mount this one this way. I also have this to mount this way here, flat, up off the surface. And that's been pretty nice. I'm going, this one I have several different ways I can mount it. And I'm not done. But this is a much better vise than even that one was. And using the small clamps, I really like those a lot. Anyway, I am now rambling. I wanted to let you know, hey, no barking. I wanted you to know at least what we got started here. Stay tuned for part two because I'm going to show you in part two how to make this, what to do and not to do. And then in part three, I'm going to go over and show you the little tricks about how to take these things. And when they have them in any configuration you want to start with, I can tell you how to turn which knob, which direction to line this up and turn it out to be able to tighten it down. And we'll go over all that in either part two or part three of this. So stay tuned. Leave your comments, your questions, any thoughts. If you tell me quickly before I make the next Ver version of this part two uh if you have any questions i'll try to include them in answering them in my next video if not just ask me the question anyway and if i don't have the answer somewhere i'll tell you i'll make sure i do answer your question so hit that like button if you learned something here or you like this video most importantly though please come back again because i'm nowhere near done Mm. Thanks, and we'll see all of you again very soon.